sharing an experience, creating a video. These are two things that I love to do in my spare time. From laid back, walk with me style, cinematically shot, to the more daring, exhilarating challenges that some call me crazy for even attempting. Am I inspiring others to get outside and do more? Or am I simply part of the problem? This is a pretty big question, and by asking it, I'm opening myself up to scrutiny, but I see value from addressing the elephant in the room, even if I'm the elephant. Last year, I uploaded a video that discussed the rise in deaths in recent years at Striding Edge Helvellyn, located in the Lake District National Park. Together, in the comments section, people put their theories into the pot as to why the sharp jump in deaths occurred. These theories range drastically from people are not as fit as they used to be, all the way to people don't respect the hills anymore. But out of the thousand plus comments, there was a reoccurring one that I kept spotting. You are the problem. Now what is the problem that these comments are insinuating that I'm part of? Well, I recently climbed Crib Goch, which is going to be the talking point for this video. Crib Goch is probably one of the more technical, razor sharp ridges there is in the UK. I've climbed many of the challenging routes looking for the thrill of the climb, with the desire to do more in the future. Official statistics on incidents aren't easy to obtain for Kribgoch itself, so I've had to broaden my search to Snowdon. This includes the six routes up to Snowdon, Kribgoch being one of those. PositivelyNorthWales.com and WalkSnowdonia.co.uk both claim that on average 8-10 to 10 people per year die in the Snowdonia National Park, the majority of which are in what they call accident black spots. Kribgoch is one of these black spots, with its narrow leading edge and 150 plus foot drops either side of it. Even in the best of conditions, it requires a confident mind and sure footing. Add in bad weather such as low cloud, rain, wind or snow, and you have yourself a recipe for potential disaster. And as you might have guessed, this is when and where the majority of these deadly falls occur. Some people feel that as a result of YouTubers or content creators, more deaths are occurring due to it being sensationalised by these videos and is giving people confidence that they otherwise wouldn't have had and attempted something like Kribgoch. Before we get to my counter to those comments, I want to address and accept that those opinions are valid and anything that I upload I am responsible for, but there is an important message I wanted to carry in this video and this feels like the right time to show you all after I I uploaded a video of me climbing Crib Goch that could be seen as sensationalising. There is also the other side which needs to be seen too. Hi, I'm Brave Dave. I like being outdoors, doing stuff, making adventure videos and putting them online. I do this for fun, like a hobby. I don't get paid, I'm not sponsored, my videos aren't even monetized. I just like making them. Brave Dave is a YouTuber similar to myself, but also runs guided hikes in Snowdonia National Park. Back in June 2020, he uploaded a video to his channel, which will be linked down below, which shows Dave and his friends on a hike over Kribgoch where things go terribly wrong. I've contacted Dave and asked for his permission to use these clips, and he was happy for me to share it with my audience. So I want to thank Dave, as this is an important message that I wanted to share on my channel. So on a Saturday 7th of March in 2020, Dave and his friends went up Kribgoch Snowdonia. He mentions here if Kribgoch had been covered in snow and ice then he would have gone back down. As it happened, Kribgoch wasn't actually that bad. Wet and windy but no problem if you're careful, steady and alert. He goes on to highlight that this footage shows how things can go from fine to seriously messed up in a matter of seconds when out in the mountains. He also mentions that after seeing the immediate aftermath of a serious accident from a first person perspective and in real time, it's a good way to help make people extra aware of the potential dangers when enjoying the great outdoors. The 
wind had picked up so much that Dave had began to voice that they needed to back out of their climb. It's important to remember that mere minutes have passed between Dave thinking, yeah, this is fine, to no, this is definitely not fine anymore. That's how quickly it can turn on you up there. This is an escape route. Dave was with his friend Rory. Whilst out on Crib Goch, they ran into the back of another couple of hikers named Ed and Tony. Both groups agreed that it was no longer safe to continue the hike and decided to find an escape route off the side back down to the pig track. This is the last video captured before all hell broke loose. Dave heard Rory shout. He turned around and saw Ed, who was at the back of the path, sliding down the hill and was gone within seconds beneath the cloud. He had flipped over a rock and disappeared. Dave in instinctively reacted and began to try and get eyes on Ed to assess the situation, but the conditions were making this incredibly difficult for them to spot him and safely reach him. Where is he? Right, guys, everyone be really, really careful. Yeah. Oh, fuck me, I think we're dealing with a dead person. I saw see the speed he went down. Oh Christ, we're gonna have to come out and rescue. Where the fuck did he stop? Right, Rory, just make sure the same does not happen to us. Come on, mate. How far could he have gone? I saw him sliding when I tried to get to him. Yeah, I didn't. Um. Oh shit, yeah. It's gotta be down this this gully. It's got. Ed! Where are you? Are you alright? Jesus Christ! We've got... Fuck. I can't believe he's conscious. Guys, he's here! Oh, fuck me. Ed, man. Fucking hell, what? Oh, shit, right. Fuck, you can't see anything. Oh, I can see, yeah, but it's dumb. Oh, fuck, right. First things first, get you fucking off the ground, mate. Now, I've trimmed this down for the purpose of the video. Dave's original is over 30 minutes long. They had to scramble down the side of the mountain in those conditions until they finally found Ed, who had numerous injuries. Dave began to assess each of his injuries and keep Ed warm whilst they waited for Mountain Rescue to arrive. The link to Dave's video will be in the description and the pinned comment of this video if you want to go and watch Dave's video in full. So are YouTubers to blame? Well, it's hard to answer that question head on because there are many factors to something like Dave's situation happening. Generally speaking, if you're searching online for somewhere to go, you're going to have more information than you previously had. I have to agree, some videos on other such platforms where the content is less than 30 seconds long, it's hard not to put the awesome stuff in that 30 second clip. But in the format of these YouTube videos, it's much easier to get across the dangers of these places, even though you just watched my success successful experience of walking Kribgoch, you can see it from Dave's perspective as well, which wasn't so successful. So to summarise, I think I need to say why I create these videos myself which is to share the part of the world I love with the rest of the world. It's only through creating these videos that I've learned it's important to put the bad side in the videos as well, to prevent someone from watching my video and going to attempt it without knowing the dangers. That was the exact reason for my Striding Edge video last year, and that is the reason for this one. The mountains is not a one size fits all. Walk to where you're comfortable and you'll enjoy it all the same. There are many paths to the top, six in the case of Snowdon. Some harder than others, but that's the beauty of it. You get to choose. Others may influence your choices, but ultimately you get to decide.